Hello, Star Optimists. Thank you for tuning in to our final video. In this video, we will be providing some specific tips about best practices for interacting with dream program participants with the skills we discussed in the last video, including listening, humility, self-awareness, empathy, and trustworthiness. Some of these tips may sound obvious or might be a review for some viewers, but we felt that these were very important reminders for everyone, even us here at headquarters. So to begin with some general tips, if a participant has a negative reaction to something, don't take it personally. It may be totally unrelated to you and a result of an earlier interaction or related to a trauma response. Ask before touching. Cultural norms about what kind of touching are, are appropriate vary greatly. And even if you assume you have a shared definition of when a hug is appropriate, someone simply may prefer not to be touched that way. Be encouraging of all levels of education, career paths, of all steps forward. Remember that there are many paths to success and career fulfillment, and we want to encourage any of them that move our participants closer to their dream and economic empowerment. Unsure how to pronounce someone's name? Simply ask and write down phonetic spellings if it's an unfamiliar name for you. This small gesture can go a long way in showing you are trustworthy and empathetic and it can show that you value the culture and lived experience of each girl and woman that you meet. Think about how you describe an individual and their experiences. Avoid words like victim and aim for person-first language. For example, a student experiencing homelessness instead of she's homeless, or say a woman who uses a wheelchair instead of a handicapped woman. Be aware that applicants may not be strong writers or even write in their native language, so be kind with grammar and spelling mistakes. Also, don't force them to share details of their experiences if they don't want to, especially Live Your Dream Award recipients at banquets or other events. Applicants may not have reliable or consistent computer or internet access, so please be sure to provide them with the resources they need to complete the application such as a paper application or the PDF application if they can access a computer. Provide them with an opportunity to review anything that you'll be writing and sharing publicly about them and their story. They may want to keep certain parts of their story private, even if they shared it in their essay. When you invite recipients to something, take their needs into account. Ask them about how, they can, how you can support them in things like childcare, transportation, especially if they will be taking public transit or perhaps paying for parking, dietary restrictions, and more. We have a resource that addresses some of these ways that you can support award recipients, and we will link to that in the description of this video. If your club requires additional verification steps for the award, such as proof of enrollment or income, do away with these extra steps. Applicants can find the application daunting on its own, and these additional measures can be unnecessary and discourage eligible women from applying at all. Additional verification steps are not a federation-wide requirement and should not be part of the Live Your Dream Awards process. After the recognition of your recipient, consider going beyond a cash award to further encourage and support your recipient. We have a resource with ideas and suggestions for how your club can support your recipients on an ongoing basis. Many of them are ideas that won't require additional club funds, but that can be encouraging to recipients, such as reaching out around finals time to encourage her. And now some tips about Dream It Be It. An easy way to make all Dream It Be It girls feel included is to provide lots of options, food choices, ways to participate in different activities, ways to process and receive information such as verbal, visual, and auditory, different ways to get to the event, and levels of physical interaction. Provide space to opt out if a girl needs a break. This could be a physical space for girls to take a break outside of the main room, or it could be just allowing them to opt out of an activity. If a participant doesn't want to talk or share her experiences or participate in a certain activity, do not force her. Provide space for quieter, more introverted girls to find ways to participate. Make sure everyone is included. Reach out to girls on the outskirts or who do not seem to have friends in the group and engage them in conversation one-on-one. -on -one. 
Take into account different religious practices. If you're doing an all-day conference, some girls may need time and space for prayer or may not eat certain foods. When in doubt, just ask politely. A good way to inquire when in doubt is, is there anything we can do to make you more comfortable and able to fully participate? We have worksheets and permission slips in six languages. So if you have girls who speak a language other than English or whose parents may not read or speak English, we are happy to provide you with them. English, Spanish, Portuguese, Korean, Japanese, and Chinese are all available and, be link and will be linked below. Finally, be open to learning from the Dream of Bia girls. From new technology to different cultural practices, they can teach you a lot as well. This is our final video in this short series about diversity, equity, and inclusion and the DREAM programs. We hope that you have learned something and we hope that this information can help you ensure your DREAM programs participants feel comfortable, welcome, and included when interacting with your Star Optimus Club. While this series may be over, we are always here to support and learn from you. Email us with questions or ideas at program at seroptimist.org and keep an eye out for more series like this in the future. Thank you for all you do to support women and girls through the DREAM programs, and thanks for watching.